Hi, my name's Elliot Wade, owner of Hooping and Looting, the UK's number one jersey destination. I was always very, very fit and healthy. Didn't really have any problems with strong big. Then around 2008, 2009, my health really started to deteriorate. I was getting 20 minutes sleep a night. I spent six months in one room. I was down to about seven stone um, and just really, really ill. And that was my first bouts of depression. I didn't realize it then. I didn't want to realize it then. So then it started getting worse and worse to the point where I didn't really see where I belonged here. I didn't think that there was anything I could offer. I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live. I, did, I had no interest in doing it. But then I realized I'm hurting other people around me. There's people which still care and still know who I am. Um, so I'm very fortunate that I have a support network there that enabled me to go out to Spain, to go to um, a mental health trauma rehab. I had to conquer the battle in my head that I was over there. I've got a lot of pride in what I do. I felt a little bit embarrassed to be getting mental health treatment, to be in a rehab per se, because that's what it was. You know, I don't beat around the bones about what it was. It was a rehab. There's a stigma around that word when there shouldn't be. After three and a half weeks and kind of against the grain, they asked me to start and volunteer. Um, so, I start, so I started off volunteering, then I was working there. Then the rehab actually closed down. Um, so I stopped that after a year because we also went into lockdown. And that's when Hooping and Luton started up and just kind of exploded. I've been buying and selling things since I was a kid. Um, so it started off as a, as a 13, 14 year old with the little Corinthian football figures. Sales have always been with me. The marketing from it is just, it's fun. So I mean, like if I'm doing something, having the fun, I'm quite happy to take the mick out of myself. You know, I'm, I've done that all the time. So it's just being personal with people. It's being real and being honest, which when you've come from a life of being, someone else for so many years and um, putting on a putting on a mask for so many years when you actually get so where well, you don't need to do that it, it it sells itself i'm mo some call me the hoop genius but my name is mo Mercy, host of the hoop genius podcast the best basketball podcast in the world so when the pandemic started obviously there was no nba games right so we didn't have any shows on tv so for our first show back I wanted to come in wearing a Michael Jordan 45 jersey, you know, come back like Jordan wearing a 4-5. So I ordered one. I was looking online and couldn't find any in the UK. I found one on eBay. So I bought it, got the parcel, it came to my house and there was a letter attached inside. And it was a really beautiful message. Elliot had written a personal note like, hey Mo, I'm a big fan. I've just started selling jerseys. I just want to say thank you for purchasing my store, X, Y, Z. And so I messaged him after that. Cause I was like, you know, not every day the person you're buying something from takes the time out of their day to show some love to you. So then I connected with him after that. And ever since then, you know, we've stayed in touch. We always talk about ways that we can grow the game and stuff like that. And always try and support for a little advertising here and there, get people to the store. Like, you know, when people tell me where they can get their jerseys from, you got to rock with the best. So I've handled thousands and thousands of jerseys now and it's just things you pick up, you know. You only really recognise when you get close up, but there's also the whole holistic picture that once you know in your head what something should look like, you'll be able to spot little individual flaws like that. But it's it's getting very, very hard um, for an untrained eye to be able to tell. But it's the same, it's the same as in any form of antiques or goods or anything. You'll know little clues to look out for.
I mean, though sometimes you have to take the risk if you see a really rare jersey and you're not 100% sure. A lot of time people won't know what they're selling. Um, so, yeah, there's there's countless times where you've done it just to take the risk. And I've also bought fakes on purpose too because you have to be able to compare these. You have to see what what people are doing to try and make them look good. But my collection, it's changed a bit. I used to have the best Nets collection that there was. I had basically every jersey that was featured on there. Nets TV at half time in the game, but generally now things which have more meaning that I've found when I'm coming on to. So when there's things which I'd never get rid of, um, we're again going to things like, uh, so Ramon's last ever jersey that he played in, jerseys which are made out to me, jerseys which have more meaning as opposed to monetary value. I've got things which do have high monetary value. We've got, uh, so we've got signed authentic next jerseys, game worn jerseys. Up until how much would you say you've invested in your own collection? Uh, <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> Four or five thousand. Not massive amounts, but they're all jerseys which mean something to me. Um, so you do get expensive ones, which are five hundred, six hundred dollars a pop. Um, but yeah, I don't spend massive amounts on jerseys because there's there's not the market in the UK that there is in America for game worn high end ones like you see Jordan jerseys now going for over a million dollars for game worn ones, um, which is great. But there, that's completely unattainable. Um, but yeah, so it's just things which I like more than anything. I think it's quite well known that I like horrendous jerseys. Um, so the uglier the design, the more I like them. Things like SpongeBob Square Pants. Long Island Nets jerseys. Um, you've got Biggie Smalls Brooklyn Nets jerseys in like vomit yellow, which is again another one of my favourites. Okay, so that's probably my most valuable jersey, uh, which is about Williams. New Jersey Nets jersey, I think it's from the 70s or 80s, but the sand in it, the really old one, so I got that straight over from America. Things like that I won't wear. Um, but I have my general B and some of Kobe's I'll always wear. Jerseys are designed for wearing. I'm the worst of this and not wearing jerseys, but they're designed to be worn. Um, so I'm starting trying to... basketball community is kind of like a family everyone knows each other for better or for worse you know the basketball economy in the UK is not very well developed it means it does require on rely on the goodwill of people a lot of volunteers me personally I volunteer as a trustee for a basketball for all charity so I make videos I do media bits and pieces I have been a video screen operator for GB Games. Um, I've been a mop girl uh, back in the day for the British Basketball League playoffs. Um, I've shone a spotlight at the top of Wembley. Yeah, I think the you know the people involved with it and the, the willingness of people to come together to help grow it is one of the best things about British basketball. If you are listening to this now, if you love basketball, go and tell people about it and go and sell it because your enthusiasm and your passion and your love for it, that is gonna inspire another person and then they're gonna go and tell another person and they're gonna go and tell another person. Yeah, so I'm in, uh, I'm in Gloucester today, um, emceeing for the first time, making my debut. Uh, but you often see me up and down the country doing things like the kids' dunk contest, you know, getting kids involved in there. Generally just being a face and being a super fan in the league. Unfortunately, basketball is very much overlooked by funding sources, by the government, by anything from there. So everything which happens with basketball in the UK is reliant upon us doing it ourselves and people which are involved in the game, building it up and making it be seen. I think what I do is key. I think I'm just a clog in the wheel. I can bring new ideas. I have my own talents, I have my own expertise, which I can bring. Elliot's gone from strength to strength. I mean, I've seen the Hoop and Luton uh, brand grow and it's grown so quickly. You know, it's, it's great to see. I mean, obviously we know his personal story as well. Um, 
it's just about encouragement. We've got to give other people the opportunity to do what they need to do. And that's the kind of ethos I have. You know, we're a brand, you know, he's a reseller of jerseys, but we, we're all about basketball and particularly British basketball. Just because I love it. It's fun, you know, I, I find it strange that people want me to do it, but also understanding that if there's a want for people to do it, then there's obviously something that I'm doing right. So, you know, if I'm helping people out by bringing what I can bring to basketball, then I'm more than keen to do it. These are key, especially being out in the streets and the people seeing it. So today we are in London at the Blue Cage Courts in Deptford for the GG3X3. Um, I have been involved with Martin in the GG3X3 for the last three years since after lockdown. Um, it's a 3x3 tournament run entirely for charity, um, so not for profit. Uh, Martin I've known since I started as a business, so I've had pop-ups here before. I sponsor the MVP trophies um, for all three of the uh, categories. Um, so yeah, I'm just here to have a presence, support Martin more than anything. This isn't about sales for me if I make something it's bonus, but it's about being here and supporting Martin um, and what I can do to make his event as big as he can. You know, basketball, it's all love, right? Like whenever I go to a basketball game or a tournament like something like we're at today, you know, you can talk to anyone, they always show love and whatnot. When I go to other sporting events, it's very different. It's not, I, I describe it as kind of warm, you know, welcoming, you know, it's like, the auntie who always cooks nice. You know, when you go to her house, it's always a warm welcome and you know you're gonna have a great time. That's how I feel about basketball because everyone just shows so much love. They're embracing of everyone, whether you're a new fan, whether you're coming back to it after you were a fan when you were young, or whether you've been here the whole time. It's just all love every time. Uh, I think, Making sure I'm at as many events as I can be around the summer is making people aware of the British Basketball League, especially the British basketball stuff that I'm selling and the culture. Like We all know that 3x3 goes on in the summer, but there's a perception for people which aren't involved in 3x3 that when the season finishes in uh, five-player basketball, that basketball stops for a few months. It doesn't need the big tournaments we get to. And like I say, it's about letting people know who our teams are, who our franchises are in this country and that their merch is available. Where I said that gratification isn't why I do it, it's very nice. I don't need tons of cash. That sounds like a very blasé thing to say, but I think it's only when you realise that you've had nothing, where I've been lying to borrow five pounds for a packet of fags. Do you know what I mean? That That's the stage where I got to that I didn't have a pot to piss in. As long as I'm making enough money to support the lifestyle I want, then that's good for me. I think as a fan of the game, just share your love. You know, my whole career is based on sharing my love of the game because basketball changed my life. So if I can share my love of the game to enough people and I can change even just one person's life through basketball, whether they become a player, whether they get involved in the media, whether they become an agent, whether they open a jersey store, whatever they might be doing, there's so many different components that make up not just the sport, but the culture around it as well. I mean, British basketball can be considerably bigger than it is now. You know, I, I don't know what the absolute ceiling is. There's obviously some fundamental issues that need to be solved before it can grow like we all believe it can. Do you know what? I don't know how big British basketball can be, but the reason I say that is I don't think we should put limits on it. In the short term, I think it's to solidify what we're doing with British basketball, which is to continue to have more and more people know about our game.